Hello, thank you so much for joining me for this yoga session. This session will be um, maybe a little bit more high intensity, a little bit more of a workout yoga class. Uh, remember, you can always modify, and um, I plan on showing you modifications as we move through. So um, if it is you do find it too much, you hopefully will also see how you can get some things to regress down um, to still get the benefit of the strengthening and the stretching that happens. And I actually think it feels like I get a massage each time I do yoga because of the way I um, manipulate the body on the inside and I call your attention out to that. And hopefully you have, you've done the few, you start to feel it too. So make sure you've got um, everything you need in order to support you. You've got a yoga mat or at least as much room for a yoga mat. Uh, it is helpful to have cushion and it does provide a little bit of um, traction. So you don't slide and your legs go out from underneath you. So if you haven't invested yet, um, I encourage you to do that. Just 12, 15, 20 bucks. I've got blankets for comfort. I've got blocks to help bring the floor up. Uh, it just helps with getting deeper into the stretches. So uh, you do what feels good to you. All right, well find that comfortable seat. Let yourself settle in on your breath. You're practicing unhooking from the world, all that's going on around you and also all that's going on in your world as much as you can and you are focusing on your breath and your body and the present moment. You're learning, reinforcing to yourself how you have the ultimate knowledge of what works for you and you trust yourself. So be careful to always protect And you're paying attention to your breath. If you're finding it hard to come off of your thoughts, it's okay, that's natural, especially since we're so overstimulated. Take your time, keep showing up and practicing till you come to a place where you're just, your breath and your body right here, right now. You're letting your body expand, your lungs expand with the inhale, and then on the exhale, they contract, and that goes on over and over, and that is the rhythm of our universe expanding and contracting, being able to appreciate both, to get good at both taking in and sending out. And that's what this time allows you to reinforce what matters to you. Gives you a break from worry, struggle, and you're just with, you just be. You're with your breath. And being free of worry and doubt and struggle is as magical as it sounds. Where well, you completely trust yourself where you have faith that you've got whatever it is that you've got to get. <laughs> Everyone's got different things going on. Feel yourself pressed down into your mat. Feel that connection to the floor, the building, the ground, the building's built into and in the world that connects us all. So think about engagement or bring a slight tilt to your tail, bring those hip flexors up, press those knees away, flex those feet, 
and you feel that support, that anchoring in, and it's coming from within. That is you rooting down, and then on your exhale, feel yourself rise from within. Lift yourself up from that space you are bearing down on. So you're still bearing down, but you're also lifting up. You're doing both. Actually, that is how the universe is. The gravity is gently pulling you down, pulling you down, but also pressing you down and you are moving up through that gravity. Think about lifting your heart, dropping your, dropping your blades, pressing the crown of your head further away from your tail. Feel that general pressure on the tops of your shoulders. Lengthen that space at your neck and breathe full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. Remember, you're the ultimate authority of what goes best for your body, for your practice. I encourage you to pay attention, to not send yourself into pain, to not do anything that is painful, but there is sensation. And so finding the difference and sometimes sensation can be intense, right? And it can almost be painful, but you are never hurting joints. You are always being careful with the delicate, most delicate part of you, which is your digits as they extend. And then it goes from there, the, the wrists and the ankles up to the knees and the elbows. When you're ready to move, you can come off if you're sitting on something. So you're on um, your sitting bones on the floor. You can keep your knees bent especially if you had your legs wound together. If you feel tingly at all in your toes, make sure that you are circling and trying to get that out. I would encourage you not to let your toes get tingly as much as you can. I don't, I don't think it feels good. Maybe some people may think it feels good, but it, I don't think so. So you're always being aware of things like that. You're not cutting off the circulation to your delicate parts. Keep yourself lifted up off your limb, so all your weight is not on the um, arms that are behind you. Inhaling and exhaling. And then letting yourself come into just a comfortable butterfly position. Your legs don't have to be super close into you. This is a great place for blocks. So reach, grab your blocks, have them uh, a little bit in front of you. You're going to hinge over those butterfly legs. Remember, you're going to get different sensations depending on how close you get those heels to you. And it's going to be different for everyone. I want you to experiment. I want you to play around with kind of pulling them in and seeing, oh, yeah, 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 that's a lot. So then being careful and kind of coming back out. And then maybe coming down and you're always being careful of your knees. You might feel this um, down your low back, especially if you keep pressing that tail down and then keep lengthening that upper body out of that lower body. You should feel a nice stretch. Inhale and exhale. Let yourself lift up a little bit. Of course, if your legs feel uncomfortable at any time, Please adjust. You're just going to lift up a little bit and walk over to the right a little bit. Keep pressing the left side down as you reach a little bit to the right. Inhaling and exhaling and then coming back through center. And then you're going to reach a little bit to the left. You're sort of hinging a little bit over the left side. Keep pulling that body up into the space right around you inhale and exhale keep pressing down with that lower body it should feel nice and strong right in here you should feel no um, low back issues and if you do then you just you need to protect yourself so keep pulling that tail down all right and at the same time you're pulling that tail down you're lifting those hip flexors now you're gonna come back into that neutral position bring those legs together and then once again let them windshield waver a couple times, inhaling and exhaling, and then 
keep your knees going towards, I mean, it doesn't matter. You only have two sides, right? I am, and you can totally, you know, mirror what I'm doing. I'm going to the right. So you're going to hear the language. It probably talks about going to the right. But if you're going to the left, just make sure that you are um, managing that. You've got your foot and your knee not on top of each other. You're still trying to press both sitting bones down. I've got the knees to the right. So that means that left sitting bone. I can put my whole hand in that. You might, I can put my whole hand and it just barely rubs my butt. So um, yours might be up higher. It's all, it's one of those things where you start out kind of way over here and then you work your way to um, pulling that butt cheek down. It takes a lot of awareness and strength. And so keep practicing it. Flex your feet. Keep that navel pointed towards your navel and heart are like they're stacked on top of each other and start with pulling them both towards that left side. If your knees are to the right, you're pulling yourself towards your left side. And then you're going to keep that navel and that heart stacked on top of each other as you twist around towards the right. So bring yourself around towards the right. Keep pulling that tail down when you get as far around as feels good, it might not be very far. It might be, you know, you might be facing the back. You might feel that open. Because this is a hinge over bent leg with a um, rotation. So then you come down to elbows. If it feels good, you keep those feet flexed. Inhaling and exhaling. Stay with your breath. Try to be even on both hands, on both arms. If you're putting more weight on the right arm, you might need to come up until you are even on both. That's what you're looking for. You're then going to lift yourself. Remember, we went to the right. You're going to come back into that neutral position of both knees up and then drop them side to side just so you get a little reset and then you are bringing the knees to the left. Same thing, right knee, left foot not on top of each other. Bring those blocks around. Feel yourself pull that right side down. Um, you can also roll up your mat or a blanket if you want to have your body touch. That's what you need to bring the floor up to you. That's a perfect place. So heart and navel, you're pulling to the right to begin with. Pull to the right. Inhale and exhale. Feel that rotation a little bit to the right. And then stay with that bearing down of your lower body, your rotation that goes around to the left now. Keep pulling that right butt cheek down, that right glute down. You're now over, you're pressing evenly over your arms, only if it feels good to you to come down to your elbows. And there, once again, it should be even. So you might need to stack blocks up on top, on top of each other in order to get a good place of support. Keep trying to bring your whole upper body out of your lower body. This is, like I said, a hinge over bent legs with a little bit of a twist, a stretch. Lift yourself up. Come back around to that center position. You're going to reset with that windshield wiper or there's the windshield wiper and then of course there's also the gentle bounce on the mat you can also you can do both right just it's, it's just like another way to reset inhale and exhale breathing full and deep let's come into that staff pose your legs are extended if they're not you're finding that connection to the floor with your sitting bones you're pressing through those heels this is another great place to have blocks down somewhere along your legs keep lifting yourself up out of that lower body depending on how your upper girdle feels that shoulder girdle keep lifting the heart keep dropping those blades you can bring your arms wide and row you can bring your arms straight up and row or you can keep your arms low to the floor and row this way so you're still hinging no matter what you're doing your legs are still active no matter what you're doing your uh, pelvic girdle is engaged bringing the back body down the front body up your pectoral girdle is engaged lifting the front body bringing the back body down it just depends on how 
you are deciding to move your arms all the different ways. That, and you can also do all the different ways, right? You don't have to just stick to one way. Eventually, you're going to pause in that hold. Keep pressing evenly through both heels. You're pressing down into your sitting bones. And then, so this is um, hinge. Uh, well, it's forward fold right here when you're reaching for those feet. You do not have to reach your toes. You don't even have to reach your feet. It can be anywhere on that leg. This is forward fold. You're trying to forward fold over your leg. So keep those knees really bent, but keep lifting that heart so you get a little bit longer. And then you're going to relax the engagement. This is where you let it all go. If you want to bend those knees again and windshield wiper to reset or bounce or a little bit of both. And eventually you're going to be done. You're going to bring yourself around onto those hands and knees. Make sure that you are protecting yourself with uh, blankets for cushion if you need it. I'm going to take off my socks right now because I know we're going up into downward dog soon. Not right away, but soon. And I um, prefer to be standing on my feet sockless. Um, just because I feel like I have more, a little bit more control. So make sure that you are protecting yourself and you're getting a drink as you need it, taking as much time as you need. You're walking your knees apart so you have got space to press your whole body back. You're still tucking your tail. You're still lifting your hips and your heart. I've got my arms on blocks. It adds a little extra intensity to the um, shoulder area. So, and you have to be really careful with your elbows. So if it is too much, do not come up on blocks. Just because you see me up on blocks does not mean that you have to be on blocks. And if you do choose to be on blocks, like I said, you are being extra careful with everything. Inhaling and exhaling, stay with your breath. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. Expanding and contracting, taking in air and sending it back out. And then when you're ready, to move up into your table, you are coming up to that neutral table position. Walk those knees so they come right underneath those hips and then hands come right underneath those shoulders and you're trying to find that evenness between the upper and the lower body where you are pressing down. But at the same time, lifting up, keep those elbows protected. Bring the weight to the top part of your hand so you can even lift to that palm of your hand, lift your wrist portion, really engage those digits and then gently bring that palm down and then you feel that little bit of space that is created there. Move through your little baby cat and cow. Just move that pelvic girdle up and down. You are pulling down the tail, lifting the hip flexors and then swaying that little low back. And then you should, it probably feels, you can probably feel a lot of things there. I do, even though I'm super protected. So you're always being careful. That is hyper flexible. Keep pulling the tail down and lifting your hip flexors up and pause there. And then shoulder blades together, shoulder blades apart. You've got the blades pulled down out of your body. You've got that nice engagement over on the top of your shoulders, you're being careful of your elbows, and then you're pausing in that place of support. Your hyper-flexible low back and hyper-flexible upper back are now protected by the girdles, and your cat and cow happens more in that middle back. You are pressing evenly into your limbs. You are keeping those girdles engaged. Inhaling and exhaling. If you want to wag your cat tail at any time, if you want to wag your cow tail at any time, inhale and exhale. You can wag your tail as you move. You're always being careful of your joints. Keep those girdles engaged. And then 
You are going to pause and rest completely off your limbs. Walk those knees apart. Maybe drink, bring those arms behind you so you get that nice rounded um, rounding of that upper back. Inhaling and exhaling. This is a hinge over child legs. That is what you're doing. Yes, it is like the it's one of the ultimate resting postures, but it's not, it's not really it's not really supposed to be like super relaxing and comfortable, right? It's definitely a place where you can go to rest, right? In that child's pose if it works in your body. Um, if it doesn't work in your body, please find a way that it does, at least to be on your knees and resting back. You can roll up a blanket and tuck it behind your knees. Sometimes that feels good to them when you press back. You can use blocks in order to keep you lifted. You're still trying to find that place where you're pressing back with your whole self and lifting up with your whole self. That's always happening no matter what. Up to that table position, inhaling and exhaling. You're coming into your stable table. You're pressing evenly down into the mat. You're engaging that upper and lower body, that front and back body by pulling that back body down and then lifting that front body, inhaling and exhaling. And I'm going to bring, keep that right arm down. I'm going to keep that right knee down to start with. I'm going to uh, just swing that lower right leg a little bit behind me as a kickstand and then bring that upper, that left leg out to the big toe side. So then pressing into the floor, lifting up that left side to come into that knee down plank position. Make sure you are protecting yourself. You are staying lifted off that limb. The block sometimes helps um, to help you stay lifted and keep opening up. You are protecting yourself. Inhale and exhale. And hopefully you've got that right knee that's underneath you protected. And that left leg has got room to be a support. Keep pulling that tail down. Keep lifting that front body as you lift yourself up into that gate posture. So that right knee is right underneath that right hip. And then you've got that left leg extended. That kneecap is protected. Your arms are reaching out. And then shoulders out of your ears. We're just going to dip a little bit towards that left leg so you get that beautiful, beautiful stretch down that right side. You do not have to have your left foot smeared down. The toes do not have to be on the ground. My toes are up. I've just got the heel on the ground. I've, I'm very careful to keep my knee and my toes always pointing in the same direction. My kneecap pulled up into my thigh, inhaling and exhaling. And then you're going to bring yourself back into that upright position to then bring yourself back down. That right hand comes down. Make sure you feel nice and supported. And then you can let that left leg float up if that would feel good. Yes, I'm on a block that helps to keep me lifted. Inhale and exhale. You can also bend that left leg, keep that knee up high, and then do a gentle reach. You don't have to. You're never straining. This can add a big stretch. You're pulling that tail down, pulling those hip flexors forward, reaching for that limb, and then eventually being careful, dropping into that beginning gate posture, and then being on both knees, pressing yourself back, having a complete Reset, inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath. And I am going to turn around so I say facing you. You come up to your table position. Make sure you've got blocks if you want them in order to help keep you lifted. You're in that table position, that lower right leg now. The lower leg turns for a little kickstand. And then I send the right leg, which becomes the top leg, out. And I'm reached then up into that gate posture. You might need to move that bottom leg a little bit in order to feel supported. Take time to do that. See how I just moved? And it barely moved over, but I do feel a little bit more supported. I am still dropping that back body. Even though that back body is going, you know, right? The back body and the front body are always the same place no matter where they're facing, right? So having that awareness of how your body is pulling down in the back and lifting in the front is invaluable as you do things like lift yourself up. And you're like, why would I do that anywhere in the world? 
Well, you might not necessarily do this move anywhere in the world. Remember, you're protecting that right leg, you are stretching, but the stretch that you are getting and the strengthening you are getting on that hinging up and down is going to last you a lifetime. Inhale next and stay lifted as you are coming into that stretch and then let yourself come into even bigger stretch. You're protecting yourself, your joints coming down onto that limb, that right leg can lift if you want, you don't have to, and then you can bend it if you want to, you're being careful with your joints. Try to keep the knee up as high as your hip. Pay attention that the foot and the knee are in the same plane, the bed not dipping down and the foot's not up here. Inhale, inhale. it's just to keep everything, oops, in line so nothing gets hurt. And then you're gonna let yourself release if you are in that big stretch and then come back over onto hands and knees to once again, Find yourself in that child's pose, inhaling and exhaling. Stay with your breath and how you feel, knowing that you have got this. You're treating yourself with kindness, compassion, and love. You are cultivating the ultimate parent-child relationship with yourself, where you are the loving and giving parent to the innocent child, inhaling and exhaling, so you're nurturing, being kind, being encouraging to yourself always, especially if you find yourself difficult. Knowing that practicing and showing up for yourself means that you are building that, the, you're, you're developing all those residuals are just developing into things that are going to be incorporated into your muscle memory. Oh, my nose itches. Into your muscle memory. So you're going to walk for the rest of your life. All right. When you're ready, up into that stable table. Remember, you're lifting yourself up. Off your limb, stay with that engaged girdle and keep the elbows and knees protected as you lift yourself into your downward dog. Try to find the balls of your feet. Yes, it feels good to come up and stretch on your toes, but when you settle in, try to find the balls of your feet. You can always, should be able to always lift your toes a little bit. Um, from the floor. Even if you can't get your heels down all the way, you can still lift your toes. And one way to get your heels down is to walk your dog in, right? Have you tried that? And if your dog is way far out, you might just need to walk it in a little bit. So play around. Move as much or as little as feels good. Come into a three-legged dog, breathing full and deep. Come down to table or child whenever you need it. And when you're ready, you're either going to drop to hands and knees and step up, or you're going to lift that lower girdle a little bit higher, drop that upper girdle a little bit lower, and get those legs underneath you so you walk up as many steps as it takes into that forward fold position. We were here earlier seated. Now you are protecting that low back by putting that weight in your back body especially in those glutes, keeping those hamstrings nice and protected by keeping those knees super bent. Try to bring the front bodies together as much as you can. Use your hands on the floor or blocks or tuck them into your elbows to add a little bit of extra to the side stretch there, the obliques. Eventually you're gonna be done with the movement. You're in that forward fold movement. Keep trying to bear down with your whole self. That weight goes in that back body. Lift those digits so they're not gripping. You're gonna inhale up, halfway flat back. Exhale, reach for the toes. Inhale, up way, half flat, flat back. Reach for the toes. This third time, come up in that great big reverse swan dive, or if you feel dizzy, halfway up. Stay knee, bent knee in awkward chair, and then press yourself up. And then when you get up to standing, you can reach into as much of a back bend as feels good. Remember to keep those girdles engaged in order to protect 
your delicate joints and then finding yourself in mountain, engaging those balls and those heels, lifting your digits, spreading them wide, and then they have a gentle grip on the mat. Your toes really don't do that much work. If you find your toes doing a lot of work for you, you really got to put the weight more in your back body, and it takes awareness and practice in order to get there, so keep doing it. So spread the toes, bring them down for a gentle grip, kneecaps up and two thighs, and then this is where framework and muscle are working together. You drop that back body, you are engaging those glutes, you're not just squeezing them, you are engaging framework and um, engaging the muscle to pull down the back body and lift up the front body. So you are navel to, and dimples, the dimples being back here, uh, are solid. You are stiff as a board, and then navel dimples up. You should feel light as a feather, lifting your uh, upper body up out of your lower body, finding that heart lift up. Bring those blades down in order to support that front body, feeling that gentle stretch and that engagement on the top of your shoulders. Press the crown of your head away in the direction of your tail and breathe full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. This is mountain. This is a power pose. Be in this pose as much as you can while you're standing. It is amazing. Try to even be in this pose as you are moving and see if you can keep that lower body Right? It is heavy, and then that upper body is light. Both things are happening at the same time, always. So, stay with that awareness. Reach into as much of a back bend as feels good. Exhale, let yourself swan dive forward into that forward fold. Lift up, halfway, flat back. Coming back down to the forward fold, to step back into the plank, the knee down plank. Stay lifted up off your limbs. Keep those girdles engaged. Release down to the floor. Stay with that engagement. You are heavy in that lower body. Only lifting up as high as feels good. Protecting that low back as you pull back into your downward dog. You can always come through table or drop right into child. Inhale and exhale. Walk, step. Uh, a bunch of steps or one big step or hop if you're feeling spunky or drop to your knees and step up forward full feel nice and secure halfway up flat back on your inhale exhale reach for your toes inhale reach up above your head remember if you feel dizzy you never have to do this coming back into as much of a back bend as feels good exhale coming into your forward fold, halfway, flat back, back down to step back into your plank, knee down plank or table, stay lifted, stay engaged as you drop, only coming to as much of a cobra or an up dog as feels good, and then pausing in your downward dog, remember you can, of course, pause and child, let's come to the front of the space, either any way that feels good, forward fold, lift up, halfway, flat back, back down for the floor, reaching up above your head, inhaling and exhaling, pausing at the top of your mat, inhaling and exhaling. You might need to strip down a layer, especially if your heart has got up, so take a moment. And of course, if you need to have something to drink, Take a moment to do that. Find yourself towards the front of your mat, and you're going to step your left leg back. You are coming into your crescent lunge. I've got a wall right here. This is a great place to have like a nice sturdy chair. As you step back into your crescent lunge, keep pulling that left side forward and that right side back, you can even have your hands be in pretend back pocket. So as long as you're not straining your shoulders and you're pressing back through that left ball, uh, your left heel, you've got the left ball engaged. Inhaling and exhaling, hands come to your heart or your hips, whatever feels good. Stay with your breath. 
inhaling and exhaling. And then arms can come out into a airplane. Take your time. You're going to dip over that right leg. You might need to bring your stance in a little to feel stable. Lift up. Coming into, it's like kind of like you're an airplane. It's not a, it's, it's, it's not a fast move. I'm purposely not going fast. I'm rotating at that shoulder. I'm being careful with my elbows. Inhale and exhale. And of course, if you're like, how about if I hold on to something and just go over, then do that. This is just if you want a little bit more. Inhaling and exhaling. You're going to pause. As you're lifting up, here's where you're going to smear down that back foot and now rotate your trunk so you're facing the long edge of your space. You were in crescent lunge and now you are in warrior two. Reach those arms. This is another place where your navel and heart are stacked on top of each other and you are pulling yourself a little bit to the left as you dip down between those legs. It should feel even between your right leg and your left leg. If you didn't feel out of control or it doesn't feel even, your stance needs to come in. You're paying attention to that front right knee. It is has a tendency to go towards the big toe. You have to keep pulling it towards the pinky toe side of your foot. Inhaling and exhaling. You're going to hinge. That's what this is, is a hinge over that right leg. I'm going to bring the right arm down to a block just for support. You can just left, have the right elbow on the right thigh, but you're not putting all your weight on the limbs. Inhale and exhale. That left arm is reaching up or reaching over your head. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathing full and deep. And I feel like I'm a little bit too far away, so I'm going to bring that back leg up, especially because... The next, we're going to move, we're going to hinge back up, and you're going to flip into that reverse warrior, inhaling and exhaling, and then lengthen up, that right leg lengthens, and you're going to hinge once again, forward on that right side to that right triangle, inhaling and exhaling, keep pressing evenly through both legs, keep lifting yourself the front body up to the sky. Think about trying to bring the back body down to the floor. Inhaling and exhaling. And then make sure you're not going to bump your head. You're going to bring that left side down. You're going to bring uh, the right arm then on the other side of the right leg. You might need to step. Like I need to step that back leg up a little bit. I'm being very careful with my limbs. In fact, I'm going to bring that right leg a little bit more underneath my face. And then I am going to stand on the right leg and lift that left leg into the standing split. Inhaling and exhaling. I'm protecting that right knee. This is a hinge over one leg with one leg up. Inhale and exhale. And then you are very gently going to bring that back leg down. You're back in a runner's lunge. You're going to step back into a plank, knee down plank. Before you move through a flow, move through some side planks. Doesn't matter which way you go first, whether it's knee down or not. Lift into side planks on each side for a breath or two. Inhaling and exhaling. If you do not want to move through a flow after doing side planks, I totally feel you. Just lift yourself up into downward dog. If you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to do those, that flow, then do that. Inhaling and exhaling. Press evenly through your lower trunk. I'm going to turn around so I stay facing you. All right, we're in that downward dog. I'm trying to remember. Did we just swing that left leg into... Oh, no, we stood... Uh, walk yourself to the front of your space. If you're in that downward dog. And then you're going to lift yourself up into standing. I remember now. We came at it through standing. That's why. So, now we're going to do the opposite leg. And I have turned around so I can stay facing you. The left leg is going to stay forward. The right leg is going to go back. And remember, if you're like, what? Well, that's what I did before. Right? You can manage that. 
you only have two sides. It's, 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 it can get confusing, but it also doesn't have to be confusing. So you settled into your runner's lunge. This is where you're playing around with feeling even. It should not feel more on your front leg and, or, and less on your back leg. It should feel the same on both. And you're using the balls of both feet, especially the big toe ball of that front leg, keeping that knee back. Keep pulling your hips so they are squaring. It takes a lot of awareness and you really have to bear down. You can bring your hands to your back pockets to see. And then this is where your hands are wherever it feels good. But then I had you reach and come down and then lift. So you're moving at the shoulder as you rotate at the shoulder as you hinge over that front leg. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathing full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. We lift it up and then you are gonna smear down that back foot. It might take a couple uh, movements in order to find yourself in a good warrior two stance. So take as much time as you need. You are still holding yourself there in your center. Drop that back body, lift that front body. You are reaching over that left leg and keeping that lower body engaged, you are gonna hinge. That's what this is happening here. You are hinging over that left leg, reaching that right side up. Keep trying to bring your center down in between the legs. You should feel even on both legs. Inhaling and exhaling. Keep trying to bring that left knee a little bit more forward. Balls of your feet here too. Inhale and exhale. We lifted. We came into that reverse. We lifted ourselves at our trunk to lengthen that left front leg now. And now we're hinging into the triangle, inhaling and exhaling, breathing full and deep. Stay with your breath. And then you're going to play around with your balance. You're going to keep lifting that front body. Use your hands on the floor or blocks to get in that place that supports you the most to play around with bringing that right leg now up as high as you can as you balance over that left leg. You're hinging over that left leg. Keep pulling that kneecap up. Inhaling and exhaling. And then you're very gently going to bring that back foot down. You're back in that runner's lunge. You're going to step back, move through some side planks. Doesn't matter which side you go to first. Make sure you're always protecting your joints. Inhaling and exhaling. If you do not want to move through a flow, you do not have to, of course. Rest in a downward dog for a couple breaths and then everyone makes their way to rest in that child's pose. Inhaling and exhaling. Stay with your breath. Fill up navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. Make sure you're drinking water. You've worked up all that oxygenated blood. We're going to come into Pigeon. I'm going to just lead regular pigeon. This is where, though, if you know that pigeon on your back or double pigeon is better for you, um, I want you to honor that. It doesn't matter which side you start on. You can come through downward dog or table. I'm actually going to start on my left side through downward dog. Since typically we always start on the right side. I'm just going to change it up. I'm going to use blocks here. Inhaling and exhaling. I'm trying to keep my navel and my heart square over the mat. Resting down. I'm not dumping down on the side that's bent. 
We'll be here for a few breaths. Stay in that awareness of your breath and the present moment. Try not to move on to your to-do list or your big plans for the future or all the stuff you think about about the past. Instead, just be right here, right now, with your breath. This is another place where you can check out your back pockets. Your back pocket should always be even. In that case, if your back pockets are even, your front pockets are even. Breath is full and deep. Use it to go a little bit deeper, to stay a little bit longer. Lifting yourself up. If you want to add a quad stretch, that's where you, be careful, you bend that back leg. It may not feel good to you. You can also not only add the quad stretch, but then the stretch with the upper body. Do not hurt yourself. It doesn't matter which way you reach back. Please do not hurt anything. And then come through a reset posture, however that looks. Inhaling and exhaling. And then you are moving to your other side, settling into your pigeon, getting that same stretch. It will probably feel different because the sides feel different. The sides are different. Your dominant side is definitely different than your non-dominant. Stay with that full, deep exchange of air. more breaths. Really let that, let yourself marinate in this pigeon. That oxygenated blood getting deep, deep, deep into those nooks and crannies that don't typically get that blood flow. Oh my God, you know what it's doing? It's doing so much awesomeness. And then you're going to come through your reset posture, whatever it looks like. We're eventually going to land on our behind, so you could always, you don't have to come into like anything fancy, you can just drop down and then pull that leg around, finding yourself seated on your mat, finding that comfortable seat once again, making sure that your sitting bones are connected, you are rooting down with your whole self and then lifting up with your whole self, breathing full and deep. And we're going to uh, twist. I want you to think about trying to keep your navel um, in concrete and pointed there between your legs as you twist your heart. So uh, if this aggravates your shoulder, of course you don't have to lift up. But when you twist, I want you to think about leaving your navel and then just twisting your heart to one side. Inhaling and exhaling. Your navel might move a little bit, but I really want you to try to keep the navel nice and anchored and you are twisting the heart so that puts the twist more in the middle back you're going to pause doesn't matter which side like i said you're going to keep pulling that navel towards the middle of your space you're going to try to keep it anchored as you lift and rotate the heart away so it should feel like it's gently like the right side is going to the right the left side is going to the left if you're looking, you know, a little, if you're twisted to the left. Stay with that length, with that support as you do the same thing. Navel is anchored as you rotate just the upper body to the right. Stay lifted. This is trying to put the twist in your middle back, in your obliques. And then bring yourself back through center, hands at your heart navel, one of each, out to the side. It doesn't matter. If you've got a few moments now, 
to go through any last postures that you want to do and then settle into relaxation for five, eight, ten minutes if you've got it. If you don't want to lay down in full relaxation, sitting in meditation, um, this is a great time to do that. You've worked up all of this stuff. Let it settle. It's just like you've shaken the snow globe and now the stuff is going to settle and it's going to resettle into different and maybe things will seem different to you. Um, and so like maybe what wasn't clear before now all of a sudden is really clear. And that is why you do this work in order for that to happen. And so thank you so much for joining me. Remember with that meditation, you don't have to sit up upright in the middle of the room. You can lean up against a wall in a chair. So you put cushions around you so you are supported. But that is just as important as the movement. So please take, you know, like I said, five, eight, ten minutes to rest in relaxation. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste. Please take care of yourself. Bye.